Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the bomber. This is their part number... Well, this is their part number. What they have on their box is BB5090-407-638. That's not really the part number that I... Um, and I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm not the bomber part number expert. Um, but the part number I provided them in absence of not understanding how to put two options in the same column. Um, I came up with a, a, a BB50 one slash seven zero because I need the one option and the seven option at the same time. They converted that to a nine there. Um, someday I may ask them how they did that, but nonetheless it was quite clear what I wanted and they of course put it together perfectly. 407 is the size and 638 is the finish. Uh, this is this hinge, this client bought three hinges. Um, you know, I had a very particular need for hinges, and we're going to go over that as well. Now, let's get on with reviewing the hinge, and we'll try to look at the part number in a mo uh, as we get through the video. Uh, so, and we're going to talk about how this client got to this hinge. But there it is. This is a, uh, an, a near perfect example of workmanship from a manufacturer. What do I mean by that? The leaves, the metal itself is straight. There's no runoff at the edges of a machine cleaning the material. The joints are nice and tight, exactly what you would expect from a five knuckle full mortise hinge. Uh, the finish is exceptional. It looks really great. This is 638. Uh, think of it as US5. You may have heard of US5, antique brass. It's better to call it um, 638 because that tells us the base material is steel. Now, if it was a 609 finish, that would tell us it's antique brass, but that it's made of brass. So, so US5 is antique brass. You may have heard of US5. Well, it's 638 when it's made of steel, and it's 609 when it's made of brass. So this is really 638, but it's a beautiful antique brass. I've been looking at antique brass for you know professionally for 30 years. I can tell you that this is a very faithful antique brass, so I'm just... Just really nice uh, how they did this. So what is this hinge? Well, first of all, it's a full mortise hinge. You can see from the leaves when they're brought parallel, they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame, and that's a result of the swag on the hinge leaves here, that bend, um, that makes it a full mortise hinge. It is a five knuckle hinge. You can see certainly why it's a five knuckle hinge. It's also a ball bearing hinge. A standard commercial grade hinge like this will have two ball bearing packets, Whereas a uh, standard grade, meaning the leaf thickness is about 130 thousandths. And it's spot on, spot on at 0.13 inch. Um, a heavyweight hinge, which you could also do this in, would have four bearing packets, and that would be 180 thousandths leaf thickness. Not a bad idea to have a heavier weight hinge when it comes to wide throw, because you've got, you know, what, what is it that you really have here? You have the door weight substantially distant from the vertical axis of pivoting. So this hinge leaf, as that weight is just brought out and around, it's so far from the vertical axis of pivoting that a thicker gauge hinge would always be uh, a better idea. L uh, wide throw hinges, in fact, are not load rated at all. Now, not that this won't, three of these won't carry a hundred pound door. They absolutely will. But when it comes to testing these hinges for weight, we don't have any data about that. So in the absence of data, let's just over-engineer it. So you could do this in a heavyweight hinge. That would be unusual, although it's been done. I did uh, hinges for a client. He was in Belgium, that somewhere close to Belgium. And he had an unusual, uh, very heavy door. 250 pounds. Um, needed a wide throw. Needed 5 eighths radius, of all things. It was eight foot tall. It was at least three foot wide, but had to have a wide throw. And I don't recall what width we made the material to, 
Uh, it may have been 7 inch or something in that range, but we went with a heavyweight 5 8 radius 4 bearing packet. Uh, I don't recall the finish, but it was it was something really awesome, like polished bronze or something beautiful, uh, and it worked perfectly. So we just over-engineered it. I don't know, you know, you know what the data is for a wide throw, uh, but that solved that problem. This client, uh, it was ball bearing or no ball bearing. It was it, this is residential, purely residential, where the load or the usage would be quite small. If I recall, it's a dining room to a hallway, and uh, you know those doors are going to hardly ever be cycled. But nonetheless, um, the difference between plain bearing and ball bearing will not be immediately apparent beyond the cost difference. And it's not substantial, but there is an upcharge for ball bearings. But I assure you, 20 years down the road, I assure you, every hinge will show some wear. And those doors that are used more often, like a basement door or a garage door, certainly exterior doors, that's when the payoff is really going to come with a ball bearing. You will not have that same wear pattern that's going to exist. Uh, so this is uh, also a quarter inch radius. The client required, the client wanted quarter inch radius. He has wood doors and wood frames. Um, could have easily have chiseled those out. There's an upcharge for quarter inch radius. The client didn't want to chisel everything out. Uh, so Bomber is e very well positioned to make quarter inch square corner, quarter inch radius, five eighths radius, whatever you like. Um, and then the finish, you know, 638 antique brass, just a beautiful sort of hinge. Um, really happy with how this turned out. There's lacquer over there. So there's two instant there's one instance of the lacquer being slightly oversprayed uh, that we can see, you know, that's gonna happen. Um, I wish it wouldn't, but it does. The fact of the matter is this has an antique brass process over it. It has a lacquer applied over it. Okay. Now screws are going to be included with this material. There are, this client ordered three hinges. There are three packages of screws. There are all machine and all wood screws that are here. Um, by all means, specify in the comment field at the time of order what screws you need. Um, you know, it's not specified as a standard that you'll get eight machine screws and eight wood screws for every hinge that requires eight screws. Um, you could very, if I was going to guess a hinge like this, I would say I don't need any machine screws. It's a quarter inch radius. Um, I don't see quarter inch radius in metal clad or hollow metal doors ever. Um, so I would say don't, I don't need any machine screws. But what we don't want to have the factory do is assume what they think we need. You know, what if they gave us eight machine screws and four wood screws? That's a problem. Where are you going to get on a Saturday morning when you've set the job up to get going on 50 doors and you are missing half of the screws that you need, indicate in the comment field, all wood screws, all machine screws, you know, uh, or all machine screws, half and half, or just indicate the composition of the door and frame so they know what to supply. Uh, this would be a 1224 flat undercut head machine screw is what it would be. And the wood screw is a 12 by inch and a quarter threaded to the head Phillips drive screw, okay? Now, let's switch to the screen view and take a closer look at all of the supporting information. This is the item that we are looking at here. Not much to see here, uh, but we're going to take a look at the image the client sent us of what we were replacing, uh, along with the transcript of how we got to this size, along uh, then some images of the item itself, then the template and the cut sheet. So here's the image of what the client sent us that he was replacing. And really the client sent this uh, because he wanted to be sure of finish and you know based on what I'm seeing here I'm thinking antique brass. You've got some light tone in here you know depending on how the, how the light is hitting this hinge I'm thinking this is antique brass would be my best guess and I believe that's what it is. So the client needs this door to swing 180 degrees, and that's inherently the problem here. He's got a vertical axis of pivoting that's insufficient to allow that door to get out and around. So let's take this. Just throw it there. Now, here's the transcript of what I went over with the client. The client has an exterior door that needs wide throw hinges. The thickness of the door and wall is three to five, three and five eighths to three and three quarter. The current hinges are four inch tall, radius corner, full mortise, or antique bronze finish. 
which, you know, looking at that image, they certainly could be antique bronze. Uh, anyway, antique brass is what was selected. So, okay, so the client is saying the thickness of the door and the wall is three and five eighths to three and three quarters. So I don't know what we're dealing with there. Uh, so we start from the beginning. How thick is the door? I asked the client and he tells me, the client tells me that the door is inch and three quarter thick, but the wall has a log finish that makes me really think, that makes me really think. Uh, what is the dimension from the face of the door to the pull side of the log finish? I would like to have the door open and be flush with the wall, sure. So that's inherently what the client's working on. The client clearly has some sort of wall condition Okay, client has a door, stop, and right now your vertical axis of pivoting is here, so he needs to get that kicked out so that the door can go to here, over to here, okay, to get turned, you know, to get out into 100, you know, to go 180 degrees, so right now he can't really get it wrapped around far enough. From the existing hinge edge to the face of the interior wall is three and five eighths. So I'm I'm thinking what the client is saying on that is from here to the outside of the wall is three and five eighths. You need a four by seven. It sounds like that the client needs a four a four by seven. Uh, that the client agrees that he needs six and a half to seven, and that I come up with the actual answer as being six and five eighths. Current hinge is antique bronze. We talk about the wide throw hinge. Um, I gave the client the option of the 643 finish and the 638 finish in images and it came back to the 638 finish which will you know if what the client has is polished bronze it's you know this hinge will look beautiful anyway the radius corner adds 25 percent back to the finish the client they can be done in solid bronze but they are substantially more expensive client says that it's a dark brown bronze oil rubbed is 640 I gave the client an image of 640 which is oil rubbed bronze Close will work, the client says. His concern is that when the door is open, it blocks the hallway because he doesn't have a sufficient uh, width of hinge to get the door out and around. We go on to talk more about finish. 638 was my best guess. We talked about ball bearings and how ball bearing would uh, have a substantial benefit to the long-term health. And um, then we entered an order clearly. So back to the beginning of from the existing edge to the face of the interior wall is three and five eighths. So, what I'm driving at is the following, uh, three and five eighths is what the client's saying. Wall, door, I think what the client is saying from the edge of the hinge to here is three and five eighths. Okay. So what I'm thinking is what we want to determine here is the distance from here to here, okay, which is called the inset. So why the inset? Well, the definition of the formula for wide throw is dt minus hb um, times 2 plus I plus C equals width. 
Okay. DT is door thickness, 1.75, the client told me. HB is back set. The amount of the door that's not cut out, that's a quarter inch. We're going to assume it's a quarter inch. It's very tight. So now we have inch and a half times two puts us at three. Plus your inset. Well, the inset is the dimension from the face of the frame to the face of the door. Let's say that's incredibly negligible. Negligible to the point where if it's anything, it's an eighth of an inch or less. Let's just call it zero for right now. Then the clearance. Well, the clearance is actually three and five eighths minus uh, what would have to be an inch and a half. Because he said it was three and five eighths from here to the hinge leaf. Let's deduct an inch and a half. So let's say that that puts us basically at two inch for clearance. Okay. So that brings us to a dimension that would be um, three plus your inset plus your clearance of putting us to a situation where um, the math says five inch. Now, the part that is not clear here is that there is some inset here and there's the potential for the wall not being completely flat. So the rule says go to the next widest hinge, which would then be six inch. However, in discussion with the client, it was determined to simply go to the next widest hinge. He wanted the wider hinge where six would have certainly have accommodated the requirement. Um, because remember, you're doubling the ability of the hinge to throw the door out when you go to 180 degrees. When you when you go from six to seven, that's one inch. But when you lay the when you lay the hinge open, that's going to give you more clearance than necessary. The client uh, indicated that there may he didn't recall, but there might be a surface mounted uh, utility box, something here. Did not have a problem because he knew that the dimension from here to here was three and five eighths. That the knuckle of the hinge would not protrude out here and even though with a seven inch wide hinge it would throw his door out further from the face of the wall than necessary this dimension would be greater than required that's what the client wanted uh, and it worked out perfectly for the client and simply stated that's how we arrived at seven inch we know it's a four inch wide hinge because that's what the client has we know it's quarter inch radius because that's what the client has so that made all of it easy and simple and straightforward however the mathematics would tell us that a narrower hinge would have worked in that regard. Okay, So here are some pictures of what the hinge looks like when it arrives. Um, when we compare what the client supplied us with the image that the client um, Yeah, it's possible the client does not have 638 finish. Okay, so maybe closer to um, antique bronze. Definitely not oil rub bronze, but I think this will complement very well. I, at least I hope it will. Uh, okay, now just showing the full knuckle pardon me, the full mortise uh, nature of this hinge, that all comes down to right here. Right here. If it was a full mortise hinge, this barrel and these leaves would lay flat on the face of the door, on the face of this uh, surface that it's laying on. The back side of the hinge, that's uh, finished as well. Bomber logo, close up of the finish itself, screw package that's included. Uh, now, so we have the first link down below this video is to the template. Let's take a closer look now at the template. 
Okay, here's the template that is linked to down below, and let's take a closer look at it. Um, so, so far we've looked at what the hinge is, we've talked about where you would use it, how you would determine what size of wide throw hinge that you use, and we'll touch on that quickly again at the end or near the end. So this is just a 5000 series template that would be good for a 4 inch tall, 4, 5, 6, or 7 inch wide. 7 is the widest hinge available um, in a 4 inch height. You can get to 8 inch, but you'd go to a uh, 5 inch tall hinge. Um, I think 4 and a half goes to only 7 as well. So steel, column, brass, bronze, or stainless. You can see how the part number changes when the base material changes. So we're dealing with a BB hinge. We happen to be dealing with a, um, a wide throw. That's the 1 in the part number, even though there they put 9. So apparently to bomber, you know, a wide throw with a quarter inch radius equals a nine here. Um, that's not published, but nonetheless, uh, 5010 is a wide throw, so we're over here. And we, you'll know that by looking at the data, uh, the table, because there's no value for a four inch wide. So we're over here. The 3.125, three and an eighth inch is the A dimension, which is the edge of the leaf to the swag to where that bend starts. Okay, so the term template is used in two different ways. The word template, it can refer to a technical drawing, which this is clearly a technical drawing showing dimensional properties. It could also refer to the specific spacing of the holes for the screws. Okay, this is what's called the template pattern. If you have a door or a frame or a hinge, and regardless of the height, four, four and a half, five, if they, if they are compliant with what's called the template pattern, they will always be in these locations. Four, four and a half, and five, they're all different dimensions in the sense of from the edge of the leaf and the center to center, but they will always match. So the term template is the technical drawing, but it's also referred to the exact locations of these holes. If you're not sure if that's what you have, by all means reach out to us. And the reason that I say that is because um, a client could easily have a 4-inch hinge that is in a non-template pattern. A lot of people will refer to it as a zigzag pattern. Okay, So be mindful, double check that first. The next document that we have is the cut sheet. Here it is, the BB5010. There is no cut sheet for a quarter-inch radius version of this, but here it is nonetheless. Oh, okay, I was wrong. So you can get out to 8-inch wide in a 4.5-inch tall hinge. Pretty easy, simple, and straightforward. Uh, let's see. BB5010, we're obviously doing 4 by 7 It's 130 thousandths thick. Talks about the screws, etc. It is a zero here, so it's made of steel. You wanted that same hinge in brass, you'll change it to a 1 in the part number, and you get the concept. Now, that first page in the cut sheet is the how to order matrix from Bomber. Very a uh, handy document to have. Let's go over it now. BB down here, ball bearing. Five, five knuckle, zero, full mortise. One is wide throw. And now we reveal the fact that it's a nine down here, so it's special. I think in the future I will order it as a BB5090, but then I will just use plain language to indicate the requirement of the 1 and the requirement of the 7, which is why I put in the part number 1 slash 7. I should have put 9 there and then just defined, but that's that's the way it was done. That's the way I did it. Bomber understood it completely. The last value here is 0 for steel. Uh, pardon me. The last value is standard weight and steel. Then our size. Bomber's sizing on their hinges takes a little getting used to, but it's a 407. 407 is our part number for size. Then after that, all we have is our finish, which is down here. No other options, requirements, uh, specialty concerns, considerations uh, for this hinge. Now, there is a link here below this video to the manufacturer's page. From there, you can pull up not only all of the Bomber products that we sell, 
by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Let's take a look at the full product catalog because I do want to review with you that formula for wide throw. Um, the formula for wide throw is in the beginning of the catalog section, as is a substantial amount of additional encyclopedic data, which I would encourage you to review. Uh, if not just for your own edification, it would be like, you know, reading anything that's interesting to know, uh, maybe not to everybody, but to me it would be interesting to know the governing principles of hinges, you know, like it's interesting to know ballast theory in submarines, why a submarine will float um, or why it will submerge. Uh, so maybe classify it in that useful information category, but not something you push current work aside to read about maybe. So the wide throw hinge formula is here. And uh, it actually falls over onto the next page. Uh, so here's what they're, they're, they're showing us how we define our, our information. Now, if you recall, our client, I think was telling us from the edge of the leaf to where the wall stopped was three and five eighths. So this defines the terms. Hinge back set, which I called HB, door thickness, inset, and clearance. So the formula is, I can't, uh, let's do this. The following formula may be used to determine the minimum hinge width. Door thickness minus back set times two plus your clearance plus your inset. Clearance can be anything, meaning when the door is in a 180 degree position, what amount of room do you need to allow here? Okay, the inset is sometimes zero but it's usually not zero in residential construction. It's gonna be something small. It'll be an eighth of an inch or less, unless it's not an eighth of an inch or less. It could be something substantial. Uh, the original state capital of the state of Iowa is in Iowa City, not the current state capital, but that original building has 16 inch thick walls and they have doors in these openings and those doors are in the center of the thickness of those jams really big stuff. Those doors are here. Pairs of doors, in fact. Okay. Those hinges literally come out all the way here. And they didn't need to, but they did. Now, first of all, this is inset. That dimension was huge. Eight inch, whatever it was. I don't recall. But the reason that they ran the barrel out, and our client would have needed to have done the same as well, is because of, imagine, so let's say that that dimension is eight inch, okay? Let's just say that your barrel needs to be somewhere here. We can easily run the formula. Let's say two inch for the sake of argument, two inch thickness minus a quarter inch back side is inch and three quarter times two is three and a half, plus eight is 11 and a half, okay? Go to the next biggest size, and, and, uh, and the clearance is zero clearance because they just there, there's no nothing applied out here. But if there was molding, add an, an, a one inch, whatever it is. Let's say that that hinge is 12 inch. Door thickness minus back set times two plus the eight inch inset. Let's say that you get to 12 inch. Great. But a hinge, as you may know, is measured the entire width. You need a 12 inch wide hinge, okay? Not a 24 inch wide hinge. So that barrel is gonna be over here somewhere. Well, the barrel is gonna be at six inch. So realistically, somewhere right about here is where that barrel is gonna be. That will get you out over here. Now the problem with doing this and the reason they didn't on this state capitol building is because here's your jam 
this this area here is what I'm showing. That that barrel of the hinge is really going to reside here, isn't it? Okay, that's no good because they would otherwise need a raised barrel hinge, which may not have existed at that time, or maybe the machinery didn't exist, or maybe that's not how they made hinges. A raised barrel is literally bent like that to lift the barrel off the frame. And in the bomber catalog, we can toss that raised barrel. Kind of shows it here. It's bent. So the client doesn't have that problem, if you recall, because that, that trim is held back. Now, if that trim here was flush, yeah, we'd have a problem. We would need to kick that barrel out like they did in the Iowa State Capitol building. Um, or you'd have to go with a wide throw, raised barrel, quarter inch radius. Okay, that would have worked as well. But because of this, we didn't need raised barrel. There's a lot to hinges. There's That's to be sure. Okay. Now, uh, let's take a look here. See what else we have. Uh, so that completes, um, you know, the review of the wide throw hinge in terms of the entire catalog. I would encourage you to review the entire catalog, if not only for the technical information up front, but it also will teach you about hinges. Like I said, useful information. Maybe you don't need to know it today, but that's where the bomber catalog is a good resource for this. There's no doubt. Okay, in this catalog, you will certainly find all things bomber hinge related. Uh, both manual, meaning, pardon me, not manual, commercial, industrial, residential, non-spring rated, spring loaded, double acting, single acting. A uh, fun fact, they have a comprehensive offering of lavatory hardware. Hardware that you would see in a commercial bathroom setting with partitions, rim bolts, basically what's a giant shutter bar, uh, slide rim bolt, Occupant indicators, door poles, door stops with hooks, um, stops with and without keepers, partition brackets. What's important about this stuff is the fact that it's all made of brass, so you can get architectural finishes on it, like brass, bronze, chrome, polished satin, things of that nature. So really handy in that regard. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Now, in conclusion, nice quality product from Bomber, um, as is everything Bomber related, really. Um, I have been to the Bomber facility, both of them, in fact, where they do the plating and where they do the manufacturing. Those are two separate buildings. I don't know the reasoning why. I think it's because Bomber bought a plating company and then just, you know, continued to run operations out of that facility. Um, pound for pound, you know, that saying, pound for pound, so-and-so is the best fighter of all time. And it's never a heavyweight fighter. Pound for pound, Bomber is the best hinge company that there is, in my opinion. You take their engineering, you take their customer support, you take their plating facility, you take their shipping department, and you compare them against anyone else, and they win in those in those areas. Bomber is a family-run uh, business, literally. The husband of the granddaughter of one of the two brothers who started the company um, runs the business currently. And I hope uh, Bomber continues to manufacture high-quality products and unique products as well. Bomber is one of those companies that has not odd, but odd things in their product line. What are they really known for? Well, spring hinges, really. If you know the name Bomber, it's because of double-acting spring hinges. Um, but they make more than that. Did you know that they make uh, continuous-geared aluminum hinges? Probably not. Did you know that they have that comprehensive offering of lavatory hardware? Probably not. Did you know that they make... Um, door guards. So imagine a warehouse, cart traffic going in and out. You have pairs of doors and they're double acting, bomber hinges. They also have the steel door guards that are somewhat teardrop shaped so that when you come into the doors and you hit them with your cart, the door guards will allow the door to open. Bomber makes those as well. So very interesting. The last thing I'd like to point out to you would be the bomber logo. And right above it, it says made in USA. A fact that bomber is quite proud of as am I to represent them. If you have any questions on the bomber, this is their part number 50BB5090. 
407-638 or any other bomber product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.